Why not? You know. <laughs> All right. Gotta keep it interesting. Yeah, let's. We're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna keep it interesting here. Down in the blocks with Chris Young, Tom Crawford here talking Michigan basketball here in the corner of Hagedorn and Grand River on this eventual 53 degree day. Yes, sir. Here in East Lansing, Michigan, stone throw from the Michigan State University campus. Where are we at? You know where we're at, Grand Traverse Pike Company, and um, we typically do it inside, as you know. It's warm outside. Plus, there's only about. About three, four seats open in the whole place? Uh, probably 178 uh, year old plus people in there. <laughs> yes, yes. You it's, know a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much older dollar crowd. Dollar coffees. Well, a dollar for a certain crowd. Yeah, <laughs> certain mine was three bucks. Yeah, yeah three bucks. Cause he's a young strapping dude. He's the former yep. number 45 for the Wolverines. Uh, Detroit Kelly Center. We're talking, like I said, Michigan basketball, and he brings it real, as I like to bring it real with a lot of people. And, um, Let's just let's just uh, tackle the 800-pound gorilla in the room, Juwan Howard. Jeez. Where are you at? What a what a mess. I mean, again, it's it's another Michigan coach causing problems off the court that have nothing to do with what's going on between the lines. Yeah. You know, it's this is the second incident with Juwan. Then all the stuff with Harbaugh. Well, actually, all, third. It, actually, technically you got, third. Yeah, Mark Turgeon. Yeah. Before yeah, you, you got the uh, Wisconsin thing. Yep. So it's it's just another thing. It's another distraction for for the players. You know, with everything football had to deal with with Harbaugh and all the nonsense, and you know, and now with the you know football, the the coach going to um to Alabama, and they have to deal with all that. And now it's oh George, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and now it's and now it's Juwan and the guys. I guarantee you, all they've been doing all week when they are available to the media is answering questions about what's going on with your coach, what happened in the situation. Uh, you know, I'm sure their their Twitter's getting hit up, and their DMs are just blowing up with people just asking them stupid questions instead of them being able to concentrate on finals and worry about you know the game coming up this weekend. It's it's just a ridiculous situation. Okay. Now, since we talked last, a nice win at Iowa City. Oh, a and great a, a win. Tough place. I mean, you know how tough yeah, it is to play there. That's, that's Carver, a great win for them. Carver Hawkeye. So that was good, but that's yeah. a little di that's in the distance. Now they got Eastern Michigan tomorrow, two thirty at Chrysler. Yeah. Before they go to what I think is a very important game on Tuesday night. Down in Charlotte, you've been down in that venue. Yep. Uh, they're not taking on Carolina, they're taking on Florida, a legitimate team. Yes. I mean, it's just an SEC team, so that's a quality yeah. win opportunity before McNeese State comes after Christmas. And McNeese State is a pretty good team. They are. So before they get into Big Ten play, Michigan 5-5, five and 1-1 five, one and one in Big Ten play. But we're going to stick with the topic because, you know, so yesterday, or you know, and you always hear, and this is what I hate, grasping on to um, accusations and hearsay when Michigan, University of Michigan is not fully transparent, they could have made a statement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we haven't even heard a statement from Nothing. Ward Manuel about the situation with John Sanderson. Evidently it was a week ago yesterday, so Thursday, yep. a trainer, this is the latest evidence, was working with Jace Howard, Juwan's son, and about, I don't know, about the treatment process and there was an argument, or Jay said something to offend the trainer or something like that, and then John Sanderson, of Camp Sanderson, one yeah. of the top trainers in college trainer, basketball. Who's, who's been around the program for, what? what is this, year 14 or 15, yeah, something like that? Yeah, 2009 or something yeah, like he's, that. He's, been, he's a, been a staple in the program forever. He, look what he did to Nick Stauskas. Look what him. he did to all those guys. Yeah. I mean, we, we have our reunions, and, and Sanderson's always there. You know, they, all those guys come back and they had they either would hug Beeline and now they come back and they hug Jawan. Yeah. Second person they go and talk to is yeah. Sanderson. And, and they give him a hug and dote on him and stuff like that. They, right. they love this that, guy that's for what he's able to do. Right, right. I mean, he, he turns these guys, he's got, if you walk into the weight room at Michigan, he's got this, this big board on the wall. And it's the transformation of all these guys that he's put in the NBA. Really? Where they came in as freshmen. Wow. What, what, their, what their weight was, what their max this was and that was, and, and all this kind of stuff, and where they were the day that they left. And it is staggering right. what, what he's able to do with these guys. And I'm not going to mention he's got a really good high school kid, uh, you know, a son. Yes. yes. <laughs> but that's, that's regardless. But, yes. But my point is, so we have, you know, we have a situation where uh, evidently, John Sanderson went to the, the defense of the trainer who was arguing with Jason, and then Juwan went in there, and then they were they were going, yeah, some kind you know, of, some, nose and nose, and we, you know. Yeah, and we, and we don't know what exactly was said. We don't know exactly yeah. what transpired between Juwan and But they had to be, John. When, you have, when you have to be separated. When you have to be separated. Well, and, and that's the thing. Juwan's my size. Juwan is, you know, 6'10", yeah. 6 6'11", yeah. something yeah. like that, about, yeah. you know, probably 250. How big is John Sanderson? Actually? Sanderson's my size. I played against him when he was at Ohio State. 
He oh. played the five at Ohio State. I played against That's him. The right. first time I he, forgot about when that. When he was first at Michigan, I walked into the weight room to introduce myself, and I, we both looked at each other like, really? <laughs> like, I gotta, you know, I got to see you again? You know, I never we knew that. Sanderson, is, Sanderson know that? is my size. He's about probably about 260, 265 with 3% body fat and yoked. Wow. He spends all day in the weight room. He is a big man. So I don't know who was trying to hold these guys back, but it better have been Terrence Reed and a couple <laughs> of these other big cats trying to hold him back because, you know, if Doug tries to get in the middle of it, he's just getting squashed. Yeah, and John Sanderson might win that battle. I, not, yeah. God forbid that battle happen. But the point of it is, is this is three times for Juwan. And I'm not saying, you know, they, they should give him the Ziggy on this thing. But my point is, it's just getting old. And now we have this very confusing situation. Phil Martelli is the coach, or is he the coach? Yeah. You know, and out recruiting is Juwan Howard sitting next to Tom Izzo down at Orchard Lake St. Mary recruiting yeah. a, a kid the other night. Yep. So, I mean, so that presence is there. What's going to happen? Tomorrow is going to be compelling. Oh. I mean, I'm looking forward to going down to Chrysler <laughs> just to find out what the post-game presser. Yeah. Phil will probably be talking. He won't mm -hmm. be able to say anything. But once again, mum's a word, yep. and we don't know anything. And lack of transparency, I think, is one of the worst things you can do in athletic communications. Yeah. If you well, will. and and you know, I would think that Michigan would finally be ahead of the curve on this stuff after watching all the mistakes that you know the school down the road right here made with with all the different issues that they've had over the course of the last couple of years with coaches and you know all the external stuff that's been going on here. And now everything that this, this school and the athletic department of Michigan has dealt with with Harbaugh, why would they not get ahead of this? Well, why would Ward, why would Ward just not come out and say, "Hey, um, these are the facts right here. This is what we can say. This is what we can't say. It's under investigation. Jawan's still part of the program. He's not part of the program. He's suspended. He's not whatever it is." And then guys like us have got nothing to talk about because then it's just kind of reading, no, trying no, to read no, into we it. Don't have a now, podcast. It's, yeah, now it's all just speculation. <laughs> now we're just trying to figure out what the hell's going on because yeah. nobody knows. I'd rather talk about the game than, oh, than I, the podcast. That game, yeah. they scored 90 points on the road at Carver Hawkeye. Yeah. No one goes into Carver so Hawkeye. Terrence Reed, uh, and does yeah, that. Terrence Reed was the topic of discussion last week yeah. in, of ineptness. Yes. And then the guy comes out crazy, man. 19 man. points. Uh, Seven for 10. I mean, he, he was, almost had double digit boards. Uh, the, the problem with that is now, now we know he can do it. Well, yeah, now, 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 what now happens, we expect it. What happens expect. next time? Yeah, now, now, you know, how is he going to come out tomorrow? Is he going to come out with that same energy and that same aggressiveness around the rim and just being present on offense? Or is he going to kind of revert back to what he was? Right. And then if he reverts back to what he was, then it's like, oh, well, that was just a flash in the pan, and this is what this guy truly is. Yeah. But, I mean, he doesn't have to go out there and score, you know, 19, but double digits is, you know, that's not – I don't want to say it's not that difficult, but I mean, come on, dude. You're playing a whole lot of minutes. You're right around the bucket. Finish a couple, make a couple free throws, and you got double digit points. Five, speaking of double digits, I think five players in double digits. Yep. Or maybe six, five, yep. five and or 21 six. 21 points off the bench. And again, that's, good. that's something they haven't had, had, had. And again, Cheddar. Cheddar Cheese. Cheddar Cheese, man. That dude. Love that just, guy. He just brings it every moment he's on the court. I think he's the leader. Oh, 100%. Of that team. 100%. I mean, Doug's done, doing a nice job, Doug McDaniel, but I think. Doug's a point guard, so he's he's obviously the natural Will leader because he's got the ball in his hand. But Cheddar is the definite 42. leader. Yeah, uh, watch him. You know, and, he, yep. and he's a four year guy. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, and and you know, seeing how he moves and his body type and stuff like that, I don't necessarily see him fitting into the NBA mold. But I guarantee you, the guy can go overseas and make a ton of money. Okay, he's he's going to be a pro if he chooses to go that route. Yeah. See why? What 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 do you want have as a former player? What do you want have happen? With this Michigan basketball team in terms of leadership, do would you rather have Phil Martelli is a Hall, a Hall of Fame coach? Would you yeah. rather have it? Or you know, there's a lot of positive aspects of Juwan Howard. Yep, he's been here. This is year five, but it's been it's been a rough road lately, yeah. and including his own medical situation, which is yeah. very important. Sure. Um, what what do you want to have? What would you rather? What what do you if you had a vision? See, oh, I'm glad that happened. I know that's probably yeah, a loaded question. But. No, it's it's not. You know me. I won't I won't pull any punches. I'll tell you exactly what I think. But it's it's tough because yeah, I would love to have Juwan at the helm. For, you would. For, You'd for, rather for the, have that? No, not rather. Let me let me explain. I would rather have Juwan at the helm for the nostalgia of Juwan, for what he's able to do, the doors he's able to open because he's the head coach at Michigan. He played in the NBA forever. He's got, you know, one of a hundred different 
you know, pros on his phone that he could pick up and call and Clear hand LeBron the phone to James. recruit. Yeah. LeBron James to, yeah. to Jordan to all these. He knows and plays with all these guys. Okay. Like, he can make all that kind of stuff That's happen. That's a plus. That is a definite plus. Phil doesn't have that, probably. Phil doesn't have that. Phil can get the door of any three- and four-star kid. Yeah. And he can develop them and make them into great college players. What would you players. rather have? Right now... That's and, the Wisconsin and, 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 and mode. I, and that, I, isn't that the Wisconsin? That's the Wisconsin <laughs> mode. And the, the problem is I know I'm going to get just absolutely roasted by oh, you know, my former teammates and stuff I like that. It. It, you it, deserve it's it. It's time for Juwan to go. It's too Whoa, much. you heard it here from it's CY. It's too much of the off the court. Is it too fatiguing? It's it's exhausting. It's well, isn't always Jim Harbaugh something. fatiguing? Would you rather have him go? Would you but rather, but not that's to that. go over to that, but I mean, would you rather have Jim Harbaugh win the national championship? Well, that's the preface. That'd be cool. Yeah. And then he moves on the NFL and just let Sharon Moore take over or something like that? If, if that's the scenario, if, if he goes ahead and wins a national championship yeah. and stuff like that, I think... Like, the, who gives a shit? Yeah, I, I, I think the natural <laughs> progression would be, okay, yeah. now it's time to move on. I mean, yeah. he's basically... Expressing yeah, now you know. that you know maybe the NFL is still an option without signing the contract extension, right. but he's groomed Sharon Moore. That would be a, pretty much a seamless transition. Okay. But getting back to Juwan, like this is the third time it's been something, something physical, where it's not okay. It, it's not Izzo screaming at players and chasing them up the tunnel. Yeah. It's it's something physical with or on the another, brink another, thereof, an, an, or something yeah right on the verge, something physical with another adult. Like, if, if I did that at work, I wouldn't have a job. No. So, and, if, and, and, and it wouldn't matter if I went after somebody physically or if I just cussed at him and had to be held back. Like, I, and it doesn't matter where you work, you wouldn't have a job. So, why is it allowed? It's the same thing with Draymond. Like, Draymond is doing all this nonsense. How, how does he still have go, a job? Go, go away. Yeah, go like, away. How, you know, how does he still have a job? Let's just take the year off and yeah. chill, dude. But, it, but it's the same thing with Jawan. This, yeah. this is the third time that he's had to be physically restrained from going after yeah. somebody. Okay, and so. I understand standing up for your, one for your player and then two for your son. But, come on. So, Izzo uh, screams at Aaron Henry, but it's not physical. No. And or well, and, and, an example and, and, thereof. And, and what, and was it, what was it last? Was it last year or two years ago in the tournament where he chased the dude up the tunnel and yeah. kind of grabbed him and stuff like that? Is that right in this day and age? No, but is that what Izzo's always done? So it's kind of acceptable. Well, then the post game. But yeah. when you talk to a player like that in the post game, they don't. They're looking at you like you're from like. Why are you yeah. making that a big deal? Because that's what they signed up for. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what they want so to be. So I don't. Part I don't have but, a problem with that. But when yeah. you when adult adult. You know, uh, grown-ups. Yeah. <laughs> grown-ups, yeah, grown-ups. grown-ups going at it. Yeah, uh, that that's not a good look. No, having grown-ups going at it. And 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 again, <laughs> it's 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 bringing negative light onto the program and onto the school and onto the Michigan brand. Right. And all the, the, all the, the, the second brand. the second Harbaugh suspension this year, they flat out said like, okay, Harbaugh didn't do anything wrong. We have to suspend him because of this, but we can't prove that it was anything. So I can't say that that's detrimental to the brand on Harbaugh's behalf. Well, I what want Juwan, facts, not yeah, accusations. What, what Jawan is doing is is detrimental to the brand. Yeah. It's detrimental to the kids. It's detrimental to the five star parent who's sitting at home, like, really? This is how this guy acts? Yeah. What's he going to do to my well, kid behind the doors? And the doors? visual thing, I mean, and, you know, the, the thing was with, with John Sanderson was behind the scenes. Yep. But the situation up in Madison yeah. a year or almost two years ago now yeah. was glaring in front of everybody. Oh, yeah. It was and right there. And you can't defend well, that. Well, and then again, with, you brought up Turgeon also. That yeah. was that was right in front of everybody. Yeah. Well, so, then, and then uh, how about the, how about in the, uh, at, down at uh, Battle for Atlantis, Juwan is uh, an assistant, mm-hmm. and he's not, he gets a double technical a walking double. off the court. Yeah. Uh, when they were playing, was it Texas Tech? Yeah. 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 And, and I understand He's still got that those competitive juices. You know, he yeah. played in the NBA for a goddamn oh, long time. Yeah, he's yeah. he's Fred McCaffrey gets booted yeah. out all the time. He's he's still got that, but it's still like, come on, man! Like that's that's a terrible look for an yeah. assistant coach yeah. to get tossed like yeah. that. You know, yeah. Yeah. like it just and and maybe it was something between him and Martelli. Martelli was so pissed. And he was like, "All right, man, it's, it's time for you to, to to fall on the sword for him because I can't go. Because if I go, then we gotta move our way down the bench to who's gonna coach this team and, because and you when, physically can't." And, but and then when you looked in, the, I, I was watching on TV, and then you're seeing on the, I mean, Saudi's kind of chirping it. I mean, yeah. they, they looked like the dynamic of the coaching staff, at least momentarily. And I get that mm-hmm. it happens, but it it just looks like there's um, some well, dents in there. Yeah, and and they're gonna follow what the head coach does yeah. whether it's good bad or indifferent they're, they're if if the head coach is is loud and constantly chirping at the referees and constantly you know doing all this stuff that's what the assistant coaches are going to do if the if if 
the head coach is, you know, fiery and all this, but not being a dick about things. Yeah. That's what the assistants are going to be. Sure. And that, that's how, that's, I, I was an assistant coach. That's what you do. You follow the example of what the head coach does. Because you don't want to be the one that causes a problem. Right. Not, and not and a now, you. It, now, you know, Juwan, our, our quote unquote assistant coach, is causing problems. And yeah. it's, 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 as, as an alumni, as a former captain, it's, I'm, I'm sick of it. It's disconcerting it's, to it's, Chris Young. It's, He's upset, right? I, I am, I am very <laughs> passionate about this program. I, I love this program very much. And it, it's he does. just, it's, it's ridiculous that we constantly have to be talking about these type of issues. We should be talking, again, what go, what happened at Carver Hawkeye? The, the absolute, you know, butt kicking that they put on them. You know, the 10 point win was not indicative of what that game was. They were up 22 at one point. They were. They were, they were running away yeah, with that Yeah, that was game. deceiving. And I, yeah. you know, that didn't bother me that you did that. I mean, that was still double, the, the double yeah. digit win. Yeah. That was a good win for me. It's a great win. And and I think this Iowa team is going to finish in the top half of the Big Ten, which, which will, you know, and they'll probably go to the tournament because they just have that, that type of team. Get that so scrappiness. This will end up being a good win for Michigan down the road, but yep. then it's it's just so soured by everything that yeah. came out afterwards. Yeah. And, and they got to keep winning. So yeah. we'll talk next week. We'll, we'll know a little bit more data. We'll know about Let's EMU. Hope. We'll know about yep. uh, Florida on the brink of, uh, of the holiday. And uh, so he's Chris Young. He brings it real. You just heard that. Tom Crawford here. Down the blocks with Chris Young, Tom Crawford on Crawford Podcasting Network. Until sure. next time, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Tom.